So for this video I wanted to go over a number of Hiccup summary reports and discuss what they mean. Some of the reports are good, some not so good. So looking at the truncation and mapping section for the first report, everything is pretty much what you would expect to see. We see a number of the reads have been truncated, although it is quite a small proportion in terms of the total number of reads that were processed. There are an excess of 80% of the reads map uniquely to the reference genome, which is good. And overall, around 70% of the reads were paired with its partner. And this is pretty good as well. So the mapping seemed to go fine. Next, looking at the filtering step to remove typical high C artifacts, we see that around 80% of the die tags were valid, which again is good for a high C library. So looking at the die tag length distribution, we see the bulk of the die tags fall within the size range predicted by the bioanalyzer results. That is in excess, in excess of 150 base pairs, but less than 750 base pairs. Also the graph is uh, quite smooth and uniform in its distribution. And this suggests we have a complex library without the same die tag being repeated over and over again. And this is confirmed when we look at the deduplication section, where we see 98% of the die tags were unique, which is good, and it suggests we haven't ha introduced too many PCR amplification cycles. And looking at the cis trans ratio, the trans ratio is around 30, 33%, um, which is not particularly high and suggests we don't have a particularly noisy library. So overall, this is a good report and we should have confidence that we're going to get interesting results from this high C library. So this is the second hiccup summary report and this time we see a very different picture. The light blue and the dark blue bars are very different in terms of their size on the graph and that's not what we should expect to see. The forward read and the reverse read should map with similar efficiency. But as you can see here, in terms of the number of reads that mapped uniquely to the genome, the forward reads, well, quite a high proportion mapped, but then the reverse reads, uh, that's not the case. It's quite a low proportion. And conversely, it's a high proportion of the reverse reads which didn't map to the genome. And what that's meant is that a very low proportion of the reads have actually mapped, around 3%. So no matter what happens later on in the hiccup summary report, basically we're going to have a pretty poor library because we're not going to get many reads back. So it seems to me that something has gone wrong at the uh, mapping step or the sequencing step. So what you could do to investigate further is look at the FASTQC reports. These are reports that provide a general overview of the quality of the sequencing. And if we look at the report for the FASTQC report for the forward read, just looking at the basic quality statistics, everything is looking pretty good. Most of the reads are high in terms of their quality scores, which means the number of base calling errors is likely to be low. However, for the reverse read, this is not the case. Um, we see the quality tails off quite badly as we get into around 30 base pairs. So it seems as if something has gone wrong with the sequencing. And as a result, we're not going to get much data back this time. However, if we just look at the Hiccup Summary Report a little bit more, we see around 70% of the die tags are valid. This size range distribution looks sort of okay. And it looks like a high proportion of the reads were unique. So maybe all we need to do here is just resequence the library. And hopefully we should get more reads back next time, which we can map. And then we should be able to get some results that we can interpret. So we probably don't need to remake the library, we just need to resequence it. So looking at the third hiccup summary report in the truncating and mapping section, everything is looking fairly okay, and the number of reads in which and the number of read pairs in which both reads map to the reference genome uniquely is around 63%, which is not brilliant, but it's not bad for a library.
What might be a reason for concern is if we look here, the number of truncated reads is lower than what we saw for the very good library, which may suggest something has gone slightly awry with the high C experimental protocol. Now if we move down to the filtering uh, step, we see things have not gone too well at all. The number of valid reads is 37% which is by no means disastrous, but it does mean that the bulk of the reads are not going to tell you anything interesting. So, what exactly are the dominant artefacts? Well, if we look here, we see a large proportion of same fragments internal. These are fragments where both reads of the read pair map to the same restriction fragment. And so essentially what we're seeing is a contiguous region of DNA. Uh, that has fallen between the two sequencing adapters. Internal means that this region, this stretch of DNA, does not cross a restriction enzyme cut site. Um, this is important because at this position is where we would, under normal circumstances, get a intercorporation of a biotinylated residue, which is required for the streptavidin bead pull down. What could be causing this? Well, maybe the biotin incorporation didn't work, so we're not purifying for fragments of DNA that contain a biotin residue. Perhaps the cross-linking was very inefficient, which meant that we only had a small number of blunt-ended ligation events in which a biotin residue was incorporated, and therefore the signal-to-noise ratio was very low. So there are a number of reasons what the, what what this means, but essentially we've pulled down lots of contiguous regions of DNA. The wrong size is slightly different. Uh, here we have reads that map to two different restriction fragments, but when you bioinformatically deduce the size of the fragment that interposed itself between the sequencing adapters, it doesn't match that as predicted by the bioanalyzer. So what could this mean? Well, a possibility is mismapping events, however I don't think that's what's occurred here. I think what's more likely is it's essentially another class of the same internal fragments. That is, instead of one fragment of DNA interposing itself between the sequencing adapters, we may have two or three or more. So when we do the sequencing, it looks as though we have a valid high C read. However, when we look at the position of these reads on the genome, we wouldn't expect such a ditag to be formed via a canonical high C ligation event. So looking at the ditag length distribution, this looks quite dissimilar from what we saw with a good high C library. Although the bulk of the reads do seem to fall within the size selection range, i.e. the two vertical red bars, the curve looks somewhat distorted. Also, as we increase the length of the insert, the frequency does not tend to drop and reach zero. And this is in agreement with the pie chart before, where we have a high proportion of deduced size ranges, which are not in agreement with the bioanalyzer results. The deduplication section of the Hiccup report is not particularly favourable either. With around 50% of the die tags being duplicates, this suggests that we've incorporated too many PCR steps in our protocol. So overall, this is a poor library, and although it may yield some results, it may be worth considering remaking the library. So looking at the last Hiccup summary report, once again in the truncation and mapping step, Everything seems to be okay, with around 70% of the read pairs such that both reads of the pair could map uniquely to the reference genome. The filtering step is not too bad. Um, around two-thirds of the read pairs were considered valid die tags, although we do have a fairly high proportion of same fragments circularized. Looking at where the reads map to the reference genome and their orientation, it can be deduced that a linear fragment of DNA self-circularized was then sonicated and this fragment interposed itself between the sequencing adapters. But essentially, the number of valid pairs is quite good. The die tag length distribution is fine once again, a nice uniform plot between the size selection range and it reaches zero 
just before we get to the maximum size selection limit. The deduplication rate is OK at 90%. Maybe we introduce maybe one too many PCR cycles. However, essentially most of the reads that we're getting back are unique. The cis-trans ratio is very poor, with around 94% of the die tags being trans die tags, where each read pair maps to a different chromosome from its partner. This figure of 94% is pretty much what we would expect by chance if we were to say that a read on one chromosome was likely to map to any other chromosome as to map in cis. Actually, this is a control experiment which we performed, where the cross-linking was chemically reversed. If you do see a high proportion of trans die tags, it would be worth going over your protocol and checking that the fixation step had been worked and that had not been perturbed at a later step. So that provides an overview of the types of hiccup reports that you may see, and hopefully that will help you troubleshoot your high C experiments. Thank you for listening.